our story, Godzilla vs. the Alien Invasion, begins innocently enough on a timber barge in the northern part of Lake Michigan. Now that we're out of the locks of Lake Huron, Captain, we should have smooth sailing. There's still ways to go, Will. Lake Michigan's a mighty big body of water. I remember. What's wrong, Captain? Uh, look out there, Will. What? In the middle of the lake, water's bubbling like crazy. That will. Whoa, what? Oh, what is it? Some kind of giant lizard? I don't believe my eyes. All engines stop! All engines stop! What you think it is, Captain? Some kind of huge lizard? I don't know. It's hidden southwest, toward the Wisconsin shore. Must be 400 feet tall. Easy. Well, shouldn't we radio the mainland about this creature, Captain? Right. No use, Will. This radio's dead. Gone. Here, look at here, Captain. All the tubes burned out like cinder. Oh, there's only one explanation. Radioactivity. That creature's radioactive and we got no way to warn the mainland until we get there ourselves. Well, that'll take at least a whole day. There's no telling what damage that creature can do by then. Obviously, these sailors don't know that Godzilla is friendly to mankind. But at this very moment, a far more sinister force is at work. An alien spacecraft hovers ominously over Lake Michigan's western shore, 100 miles north of Chicago. Our explorers say the Earthlings call this water body a lake. <laughs> lake Michigan. A typically strange Earth name. Yes, Commander Croton. Guide our craft to the edge of the water, as we've done before. Their sun is beyond the horizon. It is dark, Commander. Even their one small moon is in quarter phase. <laughs> Very well. Land near the wooded shoreline, so we can work quickly. We have landed, Commander Bruton. I've opened the pressure door and lowered the exit ramp. We must work quickly, Talon. Is Lona ready with the pods? He is ready, Commander. Good. Lona, you and Talon will plant our birth pods in the shallows of this earth lake, as we've done before. Quickly! Quickly! <coughs> Out into the shallows! Here! This earth lake is cold, Commander Bruton. That is why we're here. The atmosphere in our world grows increasingly warm. This earth temperature is better suited to the hatching of our birth pods. Here. Luna, I, I feel the other pods beneath me in the water. We will place this pod here. Back to the ship for the rest, quickly, before we are spied. The Earthlings must know nothing of our plan until we are ready to make them our slaves. It won't be long now, Linton. Where are we going exactly, Bill? A small town called Port Washington. We just left Milwaukee, so we've got 25 miles to go. Dr. Scott says he sighted UFOs along the Wisconsin side of Lake Michigan three times over the past year. He said Port Washington was a good place to look for UFOs. We can drive right up to the shore and camp out. Do you think we'll spot any UFOs? I hope so. We're not driving all the way up here from Chicago for nothing. Is that the last of the birth pods, Taylor? Yes, Commander. We must go. We spent too much time here already. But we have left three times as many pods here this time. True. But we must be gone before the Earth's sun rises. Lona has already started the engines on our ship. Come to you. Soon we will return to this Earth. Not in darkness like thieves, but as conquerors. From the world of constant sun. Not 
long after Bruton and his alien soldiers leave Lake Michigan's western shore, Billy and Linda arrive at that very spot and... Oh, Billy, what a lovely sunrise coming up over the lake. It is beautiful, Linda, but... But what? Look at the morning star in the western sky. I've never seen a star so bright. Neither have I. In fact, I don't think it's a star at all. What do you mean? Just keep your eye on it for a minute. Why, it's moving, Billy. Yes, and quite fast, too. A UFO! We'll need a closer look than this to get convincing photographs, though. That was the news boys with their new hit single front page story. Hey kids, how about this Wisconsin spring we're having? Says on the weather sheet it's the warmest spring here in over 50 years. Getting warmer by the minute. Now we've got the number five single in his swing and godfather's hit list. Ugh, that guy drives me crazy. Hey Linda, look out there in the lake. The water's doing something weird, man. It looks like it's boiling or something. Something's coming out of the water. Do you see what I see? What are they, Billy? Some kind of... I don't know what. They're almost 200 feet tall. We're going to get out of here. Those creatures are coming this way. I'm trying, Linda. I'm trying. Look, Billy, in the middle of the lake, there's something else. I can't believe this. If that's not a prehistoric lizard, I'm... I don't know what. Try the engine again, Billy. Wait. The slimy green creatures are moving toward the lizard. Looks like a fight. Wow, where's my camera? Start the fan first. Wow, look at the sparks shooting out from those creatures' green arms. And those red eyeballs. I've got enough pictures. Let's go. The lizard's heading south. Do you think it'll go near Chicago? We'd better get back there and warn them. Wow, that thing must be 400 feet tall. Commander Bruton, something is very wrong on the Earth planet. Two birth pods have hatched prematurely. What? The Earth atmosphere in the experiment area has grown suddenly warmer, according to the thermal computer. Make a complete temperature check again. Yes, Commander. It is the same report, Commander. The experiment the lake area has received its warm season earlier than our calculations predicted. What does this mean? All of the pods would hatch prematurely, Taylor. They may even become mutants because of that. What shall we do? Signal my war patrol and have them meet us at this orbital quadrant. Then we'll return to the Earth Lake, hatch the remaining pods, and move against the first Earth city before they can defend themselves. <laughs> What have you kids got? These photographs are better than any UFOs you ever saw. He's right, Dr. Scott. Better than UFOs? Hey, where'd you two see these green creatures? Right where you sent us for UFO hunting. You took all these pictures on the lake? Right off Port Washington. Wait a minute. Do you know what this two-legged playasaur is? You tell us, Doctor. You kids have found Godzilla again. Again? again? Yes. Scientists all over the world have been searching this creature out since the last sighting in the Atlantic Ocean. Here, look at this map. Godzilla could have entered the continent through the St. Lawrence Seaway. Yes. Then traveled inland through the Great Lakes until he reached Lake Michigan. Now, what can you tell me about these green, slimy-looking creatures? I don't know if there's a connection, but we saw this thing in the sky, like a satellite or something. Then minutes later, these babies just came buzzing out of the lake. Mm hmm. There probably is a connection, Billy. I'm sure of UFO activity in that area. But what about this G Godzilla? If there has been alien activity there, Godzilla could have been attracted by it. Attracted to high frequency sound or radioactivity. But where did Godzilla come from, originally? He's an ancestral Tyrannosaurus Rex who was jostled into radioactive life from a long, dormant state in the Sea of Japan. He's a friendly creature, really. He's just too big for the modern world. Poor thing. <laughs> hey, fellas, uh, you know, those green creatures look almost like overgrown string beans. Except for their big red eyes. <laughs> yes, but dangerous string beans. 
I wonder how many more there are. You think there are more? Most likely. And if I'm not mistaken, I've got a theory as to how they got here. But what was Godzilla up to when you left? After he killed us, too, he moved south. He may be near Chicago now. We'd better alert the authorities. We don't want Godzilla attacked by people who don't understand him. You were right, Commander Bruton. Our pods have become mutants. Are we capable of controlling them from the ship, Talon? I believe so. Good. <laughs> we reach Earth in minutes, and then... The first Earth city will be ours. But I've already told you, Colonel, Godzilla is a friendly creature. We can't take any chances that you're wrong, Dr. Scott. There he is now! Ready the artillery. Captain Warner, have you called for air support? A flight of jet fighters will be here momentarily, Colonel. There they are now, over the lake. No, Colonel, those aren't our jets, those are spacecraft. What? Spaceships, Colonel, from another world. And they're not alone. More of those green creatures, Dr. Scott. I count 20 of them, Billy. Battery, open fire! There they are, Colonel! The alien ships are much faster than our jets, Doctor! Our boys are keeping them busy now. Godzilla's killed those green things! Wow! Look! The spacecraft are moving off! They're leaving! Go back where you belong! Hooray for Godzilla! Hooray! <laughs> I want at least one of those dead alien creatures for study, Colonel. Can you arrange it? I'll send a detachment of men to retrieve the carcasses, Doctor. Can Linda and I help with the experiments, Dr. Scott? Of course. You two have been quite a help to me in my studies already. And you helped save us from what appears to have been an alien invasion. We helped, but Godzilla did the real turn. <laughs> There he goes. Goodbye, Godzilla. Thanks, Godzilla. An alien invasion that threatened America has been put off, at least for the time being. Perhaps they'll be back, and perhaps the aliens will attempt to conquer easier worlds, where they'll have nothing like Godzilla to contend with. Godzilla, a prehistoric monster born in the modern world. Some say a friend, some say foe. And where will he surface next? Our story begins in the fabled Bermuda Triangle. Reel in, Mr. Bishop. I don't want to get caught in the Bermuda Triangle waters without daylight. You don't believe those Bermuda Triangle legends, Captain? What? Ah! What's wrong, Mr. Bishop? Look! Out in the water. That fin must be a hundred feet high. Break it now, Air. It's some kind of giant lizard or something. Fighting a sea creature. Baby, now you don't think those Bermuda Triangle stories are so funny. Let's just get out of here, Captain. Those creatures may get tired of fighting each other and come at us. So, Godzilla is in the Bermuda Triangle off the Florida coast. And what is this other sea creature Mr. Bishop saw on his supposedly uneventful fishing trip? It is an hour since the two men first sighted Godzilla and Amphibion. And they haven't spoken a word until... I've reversed the engine so we can ease into our mooring, Mr. Bishop. You okay, sir? Uh, I think so. Come on, I'll buy you a drink at the Miami Marina Bar. Here, Mr. Bishop, have another drink. 
You'll be okay. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm okay. You're gonna go over the deep end if you don't get a grip on yourself, sir. Don't, uh, don't you think we ought to report, uh, report what we should? Now, see? look, sir. You yourself were skeptical about the Bermuda Triangle legends. You go to the authorities describing a giant prehistoric lizard that spits fire and some kind of sea monster, well, <laughs> they'll just put you away for a long time. But we saw them, Captain. You saw those monsters. They're real. But I know just when to keep my mouth shut, sir. Have another drink, Mr. Bishop. I don't want any more. We gotta report what we saw, Captain. Don't you understand? Less than 60 miles off the Miami coast, there are two of the most monstrous creatures any man's ever seen. <laughs> Captain Thompson to Patrick Air Base. We finished our run and we're coming home. Well done, Captain. Safe trip home. Well, how do you feel, son? Fine, Dad. I'm glad you let me come this time. Well, this was just a distance run. We're over the Bermuda Triangle now. Boy, the water sure looks blue down there. See the way the sun shines across it? The sea is a beautiful but unpredictable lady. Oh, wow. Look at that, Dad. The water seems to be spinning around in that one spot down there. Near that fishing boat. Mm-hmm. Let's go down for a closer look. Dad, there's something... Something coming out of the water near the boat. Dad, it's a giant fin. There's something else in the water, son. Behind the fin. I'll get as close as I can. Get that camera ready. Captain Jennings is a trained paleontologist, Tommy. He'll know what to make of these pictures we took. Go ahead. Oh, Rick Thompson and Tommy. How are you two? Okay, Larry, but uh, this isn't a friendly visit. What's wrong, Rick? You heard about the fishing boat swamped off the coast this afternoon? Mm -hmm. Take a look at these pictures we got of it. Oh, sure, Rick, but you shouldn't have hung around for pictures during a storm in the Triangle. There wasn't any storm in the Triangle today. You're not looking at the photos. No storm. Well, how'd the boat sink? What are these pictures supposed to be? You tell us, Larry. If I didn't know better, Rick, I'd say you've got the next best thing to the Loch Ness Monster here. That fin is, what, a hundred feet out of the water, judging by the boat in his photo? Look at all the pictures, Larry. You two have really stumbled onto something here. Yes. But what, Larry? Isn't that a giant lizard or something, Captain Jennings? Well, technically, a pleosaur, Tommy. An ancestor of Tyrannosaurus rex. It stood on two legs, had small frontal arms and large, wide jaws for ripping and tearing flesh. We photographed that pleosaur, or uh, whatever it is, from my plane this afternoon in the Triangle, chasing whatever that fin thing is. I wonder, is it possible? Is what possible, Larry? Godzilla. I thought the Japanese had killed him years ago. Godzilla? Godzilla was a long, dormant pleosaur, Tommy. Awakened to the modern world by nuclear radiation. It appears Godzilla is still alive. Are you asking me to believe this story about sea creatures and giant lizards? It's a pleosaur, Commander Radley. Perhaps 400 feet tall. I can see the photograph, Captain Jennings, and I still don't believe it. The Commander, two days ago, a chartered fishing boat out of Miami encountered these two creatures in the same general area. One of the men on board has been put under observation. But his description of what nearly swamped their boat fits what you see in these photos. That's right, Commander. Well, I... I, I... What? When? Yes, sir. I'll dispatch them immediately. Oh, what is it, Commander Riley? You're to lead a flight of nuclear fighter jets to the Miami Beach area, Captain Thompson. Now, sir? Immediately. It seems a commercial airline pilot has just made a most fantastic report to the Miami airport. And? He says he saw a huge lizard, gentlemen. <laughs> and another equally fantastic creature with a large fin on its back and long, sharp claws. The, uh, <clears throat> lizard was chasing the fin creature towards Miami Beach. Godzilla is a pleosaur, Commander. Whatever, Jennings. Now, Rick, your orders are to stop them any way you can. You'll carry nuclear rockets. The civilians there will be ordered inland. Now, get going, man! <laughs> Thank you.
Tommy will come down to Miami by Jeep with me, Rick. We'll take care of yourself. You take care of yourself, Dad. Rick, Godzilla may be your best weapon against this sea creature. I don't get you, eh? This sea creature is our real problem, and Godzilla seems to be defending us against it. Now, don't kill Godzilla, Rick. If we can get a chance to study... My then... job is to protect the people in Miami, Rick. Oh, right, but if Godzilla does no harm, do him none. We'll try, Larry. We'll try. <laughs> to catch a wave this time, Bill. These baits are running as high as I've ever seen off Florida. I don't understand it, Shorty. There's never been a surf like this here. It must be a whale of a storm inland, but the radio never mentioned a thing this morning. Maybe something's doing in the Gulf. Let's just get these boards out and enjoy while the surf lasts. Mm, must be five footers. Hey, Bill, you see something out there? Where? A couple of hundred yards. Looks like the tip of a fin. Ah, Shorty, don't start with that shark business. You've been watching too many movies, man. You want to go first or what? There. There it is again. You cut it out. I'm getting out of here, Bill. Come on, Bill. Don't stay out there. That Shorty. Always kidding around. Wait a minute. What's going on here? No. That fin must be a hundred feet high. That's... That's a giant lizard. Needs help! Somebody! He's out there on a surfboard! Wait! Someone wait! He needs help! Your friend's dead, man! He just went under a giant fin! You better get off to the beach, man! This is Captain Wilson of the 4th Infantry. We are holding a position on the beach. All non-military personnel evacuate immediately. I say again, evacuate immediately! <laughs> Captain Wilson, how long can we hold out here? Well, I don't know, Captain Jennings. There's a flight of nuclear fighter jets coming in. That's my dad. He's leading the flight pattern. Uh, get this boy back, Captain Jennings. Aww. He'll be all right with me, Captain. Besides, where would you say is a safe place? Look! Godzilla's chasing the sea monster onto the beach. Look at that thing. It's amphibious. A back fin a hundred feet high claws like a giant lobster. It's glowing like... Stand back, Tommy. That amphibian is radioactive. Those things are coming right for us. Uh, Lieutenant O'Rourke, is your artillery ready? Ready, Captain Wilson. Fire at will, Lieutenant, and make them count. Favorite one, open fire. Those shells aren't doing a thing. Captain Wilson, have your men concentrate on Amphibian. Don't shoot at Godzilla. At who? Godzilla, the creature on two legs, Wilson. He's trying to save us from the Amphibian. And he's our only hope. Flight Arc 1 to flight pattern. Our targets are below us at 2 o'clock. They'll go in one at a time before they reach the hotels on the main strip. Follow me. Hold your fire, Lieutenant O'Rourke. Let's see what our jets can do. Those rockets hardly face the creatures. Look, Captain Jennings. Godzilla's caught the amphibian. Godzilla's trying to break amphibian's neck by twisting it around. Wow! Get him, Godzilla! Get him! You can do it! Yeah, Wilson to Commander Radley. The fighter jets are coming in for a third pass. Now I'll be in contact again in a few minutes. Come on, Godzilla, do your stuff, boy. Artillery at the ready, Lieutenant O'Rourke. Are like raindrops to those monsters, Captain Wilson. I'm afraid you're right, Jennings. Come on, Godzilla, come on! Yay! Godzilla beat Amphibian! Godzilla won!
After I've gotten these photos of the amphibian, Captain Wilson, I'll need the help of your men to transport the carcass back to my base for study. Uh, what do you think this, this creature is, James? Where did it come from? Amphibian seems to be a mutant form of an early prehistoric amphibious creature. Well, are there any more like him, do you think? Let's hope not, Captain Wilson. Flight Hawk 1 to flight pattern. Let's head for home. But we haven't gotten that other creature, sir. And we're not going to. He's heading out to sea again. And besides, it was Godzilla who saved our necks. Over and out. Well done, Godzilla boy. Godzilla went back to sea after defeating Amphibion. Was this Amphibion the explanation of the strange occurrences in the so-called Bermuda Triangle? And what about Godzilla? Where will he go? Only time will tell.